uh, where retrofitting is uh, necessitated. Suppose, uh, uh, particularly if you take uh, Andhra Pradesh, uh, majority of Andhra Pradesh till division is under earthquake zone 1. But uh, after subsequent changes in uh, 2008 or so, the Andhra Pradesh, majority of Andhra Pradesh came to zone 3 in place of zone 1. That is from no risk zone to severe risk zone, it is uh, transformed. So whatever the buildings built before that date are susceptible for seismic uh, uh, danger. So uh, in such cases, where important structures are there, where public places are there, there this uh, retrofitting is very much necessitated. This retrofitting is uh, without dismantling the building, without changing the usage of the building. The building can be strengthened by, by making proper design and with good retrofitting techniques. And this, uh, in this photograph, you can see uh, the foundation is also retrofitted. Why such things will happen? When, this, when such things will happen? Actually, one building is designed for residential purpose. Subsequently, based on demand, the building is uh, found to be used for commercial use or industrial use. Suppose uh, the residential building, if it is designed for residential building, its uh, um, uh, live load is uh, designed for 2 kN per square meter. Whereas if it is a commercial building or a warehouse building, the live load will be about 5 kN per square meter. If the same building of uh, residential use is to be used for commercial use. There are two options. One is to demolish that building and construct with the new design or retrofit, retrofit the building with the proper technique and strengthen the building and without changing the <coughs> main shape and, uh, uh, shape and size of the building. So, uh, in, uh, particularly, if the building is a old one, that is a, as per a old town plan norms, it is designed. And if it is dismantled and reconstructed, what happens? As per present town planning norms, the setbacks are to be maintained and there is a possibility of getting the size reduced drastically. To avoid such things, this... Uh, Uh, to avoid such things, uh, the building can be retrofitted or strengthened uh, to make it uh, functional for the purpose which for which we are proposing. So uh, there one has to work out whether the retrofitting costs less or reconstruction costs less and the FSI which will have more advantage, all these things uh, are to be examined thoroughly and then only one has to come to a decision to go for either retrofitting or reconstruction. There are, before starting the purpose, we have to make, what for what purpose we are doing? Is the repair is required or retrofitting is required? Crack repair techniques, rehabilitation, uh, retrofitting methodology, principle of retrofitting, methods of retrofitting, stages of retrofitting, rehabilitation methodology, process of rehabilitation, and methods of it. Repair and uh, rehabilitation is the, repair and rehabilitation is the process of improving an existing structure for new conditions of use. It aims at uh, restoring the structure to its structure, its uh, original service level, it once had and has now lost. So whatever the strength lost, that is to be recouped with this uh, retrofitting or uh, restoring technique. The purpose is to improve the surface appearance, to improve durability, to change the live load pattern during services, need of enhancing load capacity, after failure of a structure, 
suppose if a partial failure has occurred that that can be retrofitted and uh, the purpose of uh, uh, that is also a good purpose and uh, when we come to about uh, repair to bring back the position of structure to its previous condition so it gives performance same as previously it doesn't cover the strength aspect of the structures some examples of repair are a decoration of uh, structure painting whitewashing etc and checking of wiring of a building that's also a repair repair technique repair of doors and windows repairing of damaged flooring relaying of disturbed roof tiles replastering of any wall if required replastering of any wall if required all these are coming under repairs whereas rehabilitation of a building means returning a building or a structure to a useful state by means of repair modification or alteration it is related to strength aspects of structures whereas repairs they are not related to strength aspects but rehabilitation is particularly related with the strength aspect of structures to bring back the position and condition of the structure by considering the strength aspect some examples are to fill the wide cracks using some suitable material addition of reinforcing mesh on both sides of the wall injecting epoxy like uh, epoxy like material into cracks in walls columns beams etc actually in this lecture I, uh, i am i am going to make the introduction of these techniques only i am not going deep into each and every method or, method or technique why because the time is very limited and in the next session we will continue each topic in a detailed manner this is a building which is uh, before rehabilitation and after rehabilitation retrofitting retrofitting is uh, particularly uh, more uh, related with uh, seismic uh, retrofitting because uh, majority of the structures are not designed for the present earthquake conditions or earthquake code so this retrofitting is uh, uh, mostly uh, linked with uh, seismic uh, codes earthquake earthquake creates a great devastation in terms of life money and failures of structures earthquake mitigation is an important field of study from a long time view seismic retrofitting is a collection mitigation techniques for earthquake engineering it is of utmost importance for historic monuments areas prone to severe earthquakes and tall or expensive structures it is the modification of existing structures to make them more resistant to seismic activity ground motion or soil failure due to earthquake soil failure means uh, in uh, majority of the areas uh, this uh, soil liquefaction effect is most predominant particularly where loose sandy soils are there there the possibility of liquefaction is very much there and it causes lot of failures for the structures uh, when we deal with the uh, foundation designing this liquefaction effect is to be very much considered and uh, that, that is a important aspect particularly in sandy soils where n values are generally lower than 7 the effect of liquefaction will be more it is a it is a generic uh, generic discussion only and where n values are less than 7 in sandy soils there is a possibility of liquefaction effect will be there <laughs> the retrofitting techniques are also applicable for other natural hazards such as tropical cyclones tornadoes and severe winds from thunderstorms when is a seismic retrofitting needed the two circumstances are earthquake damaged buildings and earthquake vulnerable buildings with no exposure to expo earthquakes actually though the earthquakes are not there the possibility of earthquakes where 
there is a possibility is there there also this retrofitting is uh, very much needed giving unity to the structure by providing proper connection between resisting elements increasing the lateral strength in one or both directions by reinforcement or by increasing wall areas or the number of walls and columns avoiding the possibility of brittle modes of failures by proper reinforcement and connection of resisting members suppose uh, if one uh, old uh, apartment is there uh, which is not designed for earthquake in such cases if uh, one uh, one or two shear walls are introduced the possibility uh, the possibility uh, uh, the resistance against earthquakes can be drastically improved and that costs very little and uh, whereas the resistance against earthquakes will be very much high so introduction of uh, shear walls which is a easy technique in uh, residential particularly for residential apartments where lift walls or uh, staircase side walls etc can be made as the shear walls very easily that uh, that can be used with uh, uh little bit uh, uh, with little cost and uh, very easily it can be done uh, the what is the repair methodology um, first uh, it is to be evaluated relating to observation observe observation to causes what are the causes for it whether due to water seepage or due to uh, this uh, water water quality like that what are the reasons for that what are the causes for that that those are to be evaluated first and based on the evaluation of causes what are the methods to be followed and materials to be followed are to be thoroughly verified and you have to prepare the drawings and specifications for each and every element and you have to select a contractor who has got good experience in executing such similar works and while executing the work one should be very cautious about the quality control and since you are doing it second time it's a repair method repair technique quality control and quality observation is very much needed what are different materials used for crack repair uh for floor repair expansion joint crack fillers for in, ma in majority of the cases uh, this expansion joints uh, the cracks uh, uh, sorry the expansion joints the filler material will be lost and there will be seepage to avoid that those uh, those are to be filled with crack fillers fraser and kohler floor repair concrete floor coatings concrete floor coatings improves the waterproof water tightness and concrete sealer concrete wall and ceiling repair and driveway and patio repair cleaners and degreasers what are different materials used for crack repair cement slurry cement mortar epoxy resin polymer modified cementitious products nowadays this epoxy resins and polymer modified cementitious products are becoming more popular and are very efficient and effective and those are now they are very at affordable rates what are the different techniques of crack repairs epoxy injection grouting grouting and sealing flexible sealing stitching providing additional reinforcement drilling and plugging pre stressing steel grouting dry packing surface coatings The stitching method these are the photographs of uh, stitching method epoxy injection cement grouting drilling and plugging uh, epoxy injection grouting cracks as in narrow as uh, 0.002 inches that is 0.05 mm can be bonded by the injection of epoxy so uh, this technique is uh, useful where the cracks are very narrow there this epoxy injection method works out to be well and efficient the technique generally consists of establishing entry and venting ports 
at close intervals along with along the cracks sealing the crack on exposed surfaces and injecting the epoxy under pressure epoxy injection has been successfully used in repair of cracks in buildings bridges dams and other types of concrete structures what is the procedure clean the cracks seal the surface fittings inserted into drilled holes bonded flush fitting mix the epoxy inject the epoxy remove the surface seal these are the crack repair techniques grouting and sealing this is the simplest most common and inexpensive method for both fine and larger isolated cracks this uh, routing and uh, sealing method is very helpful this method involves enlarging the cracks along its uh, exposed face and sealing it with the suitable joint sealant most used for floors and pavements in road pavements hot tar use is used as sealant what are the side effects chemical attack corrosion of rebar swelling all these things can be controlled this is the original crack routing means it is widened and then it is filled with the joint sealant this is also this is a road where the bitumen is used for sealing this is the original crack routing is done to a width of about 6 mm and it is filled with sealer material stitching stitching may be used when tensile strength must be re established across the major cracks stitching involves drilling the holes on both sides of the crack grouting in u shaped metal with the short legs called staples are stitching dogs i'll show you in the next slides photographs this is the stitching method where the tensile strength is required uh, uh, this uh, routing and uh, grouting may not be effective there you have to make this stitching method there thereby you can increase the tensile strength of the element and uh, these uh, u shaped or c shaped are called the stitching dogs this is the stitching method these are the photographs next is providing additional reinforcement the cracked reinforcement concrete bridge grid can be successfully repaired by using epoxy injection and reinforcing bars this technique is technique consists of sealing the crack drilling holes of 20 mm that intersect the crack plane at approximately 90 degrees filling the hole and crack with injected injected epoxy and placing a reinforcing bar into drilled hole typically 12 mm to 16 mm diameter bars extending at least 500 mm on each side of the crack are used the epoxy bonds are bought to the sides of the hole the epoxy used to rebound the crack should have a very low viscosity prepare by providing extra reinforcement this is the method where the cracks are there there the reinforcement is introduced through a hole and the gap is filled with epoxy to have the to gain the original strength drilling and plugging this method consists of drilling down the length of the crack and grouting it to form the key this technique is only applicable when cracks run in reasonable straight lines and are accessible at one end here this is very important this technique is applicable where the cracks are accessible from at least one side and 
Defect method is most often used for repair of vertical cracks in retaining walls. A hole, typically 50 mm to 75 mm in diameter, should be drilled, centered on the on centered on and following the crack. The grout key prevents transverse movements of the sections of concrete adjacent to the crack. If the keying effect is essential, the resilient material can be placed in a second hole, the flat being grouted. The, <clears throat> this is the method where most, but most particularly in uh, retaining walls, this technique is uh, very much effective. Where the, the cracks are almost vertical and accessible for at least from one side, this technique can be easily adopted and effectively adopted. Crack, crack repair by pre-stressing the pre-stressing steel. When a major portion of member is to be strengthened or a crack is to be closed, post-tensioning is often the desirable solution. Why post-tensioning is most desirable means that with little reinforcement, uh, uh, we, can, we can get high strength. Uh, that's why this uh, post tensioning will be desirable where the crack is major and uh, the strength required is also very high. Then this post tensioning technique will be effectively used. The techniques used for pre-stressing strands are bar to apply compressive force. Adequate anchorage must be provided for the pre-stressing steel. This method of correction crack this method is applicable for slabs and beams and uh, this is a uh, very effective and efficient uh, of course little bit costly when compared with other techniques but uh, with a little modification we can get the benefit of it and uh, this is uh, a another technique of making the tension type where the cracks are developed in the slab due to tension, the, where other methods are not uh, suitable or uh, sometimes uh, it is economical, then you, you have to make uh, holes in the beams and thereby you can make uh, tension ties and they will be tied, uh, tied tightly so that the tension will be created and uh, the cracks can be controlled. This is the photograph showing where cracking repair by pre-stressing the steel is used. Grouting. The purpose of grouting is to strengthen the porous concrete, to prevent the seepage in dam or slabs and water retaining structures, to reduce uplift pressure below dam, to fill the cracks in concrete structure. Grouting, suppose if our slabs for any reason uh, they, they are uh, leaking. Then uh, first we try with the uh, grouting technique. This is a simple technique. Uh, cement mortar grout is uh, efficient, uh, particularly in uh, small uh, thickness slabs. Where uh, whereas in residential buildings, where uh, during a concrete casting due to other reasons, uh, if slurry is lost in the concrete, in such cases, uh, this uh, grouting technique. Uh, will uh, perform well and the cracks will be fell, filled very easily and it can be made watertight. The procedure for grouting is drilling of grouting holes, arrangement of grout pipes, cleaning of cracks and inserting grouts, grout in the holes. There are uh, different types of grouting, consolidation grouting, stage grouting and cut in grouting. And uh, most commonly used is the uh, Portland cement grouting. Wide cracks, particularly in gravity dams and thick walls, may be repaired by filling with uh, Portland cement grout. This method is effective in preventing water leakage, but will not structurally bond the cracking cracking sections. Here, the advantage is it prevents water seep water seepage or leakage, but it does not structurally bond the cracking sections. That is a disadvantage. Grouting mixers may contain cement and water or cement plus sand and water depending upon the width of crack and purpose. 
this is a Portland cement grouting. Rehabilitation. What are different types of rehabilitation? Constructional and technical rehabilitation, architectural re rehabilitation, public facilities rehabilitation, and social life rehabilitation. Materials used for rehabilitation are unmodified Portland cement mortar or grout, latex modified Portland cement mortar or concrete, quick setting non shrink mortar, polymer concrete, epoxy mortar or concrete, methyl methacrylate concrete. The process of rehabilitation is first we need to investigate the causes and identify the problems and understand. Then we should use non-destructive test methods to understand damages and defects. Here, while, while executing or before executing the rehabilitation process, we have to make NDT tests to assess the existing structure's strength and the integrity of the structure. All these parameters can be tested by non-destructive testing and based on that NDT test reports, uh, test results, if needed, core samples are to be collected and they are also to be tested and then only we have to come to a decision about this rehabilitation process. The next step is to consider the structural and operational requirements to select the rehabilitation method. Next is uh, the what is the structural requirement? What are the operational requirements? As I, as I explained earlier, the operational requirements, suppose the building is originally designed for residential use. Now you are, you are proposing to use it for hospital or a commercial building or for industrial use. In such cases, uh, the method will play an important role based on your requirement. Finally, we have to select the right repair material with appropriate methodology then you have to decide based on your requirements suppose the slab strength is to be increased then you have to you you have to go on, go for reinforcing the structure with additional reinforcement or carbon wrapping carbon wrapping method also works out to be very well and for strengthening of buildings or slabs or beams and the uh, carbon retrofitting method is a uh, very simple just wrapping with the carbon material you can have the additional strength and uh, this technique is becoming very popular though it is very costly uh, the, the functional utility of the building will not be disturbed dur during the repair process and different methods of rehabilitation are jacketing short creating or genetting, stitching by iron or steel dogs on sides, external pre-stressing by wires or rods, powerless of defected structure. Jacketing is done for deteriorated columns, piles, beams, slabs, etc. So uh, I have shown in the first slides also about this uh, jacketing method. The jack in the jacketing method, the deteriorated columns for deteriorated columns, additional reinforcement cage will be created and the concrete can be casted. What I generally prefer for this uh, method of rehabilitation of jacketing is that instead of going for conventional concrete, go for fiber reinforced concrete uh, or uh, this polymer polymer based concrete so that the sections can be very thin and there is no need of making curing because you are doing this uh, work for the building which is under use so in in such cases if you go for conventional concrete you may not be able to make a proper curing in such cases it is uh, highly recommended to go for the uh, polymer based concrete so that the sections can be very thin, effective, and need of curing is not there. Shortcrete or genetting. 
a concrete mix of very high workability is fired with compressed air it is more suitable where water should not penetrate through the wall like water tanks this method of the uh, gnetting is highly useful for the cellar walls and for the water tank walls this is a the concrete mix will be pumped with a, a high pressure of compression thereby it will adhere to the existing structure and it will it will create good bond between existing concrete and the new concrete stitching by iron or steel dogs on sides stitching is done for cracks in beams and beams or slabs the external prestressing by wires or rods sometimes external wires fibers or steel rods are embedded in the concrete the experiments show that prestressing those wires increase the stresses to a higher limit wireless on defected structure if cracks appear on flooring it can be repaired by providing wireless a thin layer of protecting material is provided above the old flooring to improve the appearance other methods of repair and rehabilitation of structures are prepacked concrete bonding with the injection of epoxy under pressure grouting and sealing grouting etc retrofitting of buildings the process of changing or repairing something after it has been manufactured is known as retrofitting after a building's construction and occupation retrofitting work entails modifying or repairing the structure system as a result of work the structure safety and durability have improved this uh, the, the, these are the retrofitting uh, photographs the principles of retrofitting are the prioritization of building to be retrofitted should be based on seismicity importance and risk of damage in area of high seismicity a cost benefit analysis may be required to decide on prioritization this is what i am saying from the beginning actually you have to make cost analysis if the what is the cost of retrofitting or repairing what is the cost of total replacement the and what is the functional utility suppose uh, if by dismantling and reconstructing if the functionality is improved and the cost is almost at par with retrofitting then it is preferred to go for a new construction instead of making it retrofitting why why because why it is uh, because the total design will be a new design based on new codes and based on the present requirement so there will not be any compromise on that suppose if the cost effectiveness is very effective with retrofitting then you opt for retrofitting the structural inadequacy should be identified by analysis and inspection strengthening should be aimed to correct such deficiencies this is what i am saying actually if the building is designed for one purpose and now you are using it for another purpose then the structure is to be retrofitted there the clear analysis a detailed analysis uh, either you have to run it through etabs or uh, stad pro or any good software and you have to come to a conclusion that uh, the uh, what is the method of uh, uh, retrofitting is required or what is the material to be used for strengthening it and based on that only you have to make the decision but not on thumb rules it is always not recommended to go with thumb rules go with a clear and detailed structural analysis and based on that only you make your retrofitting uh, procedure otherwise that may not give effective results after afterwards high quality of construction and insertion of special binding elements to connect and old uh, to connect old and new elements should be ensured this bonding is very much required 
so whatever the materials we select those those should have good bonding between <coughs> old structure and new structure otherwise this will not give good performance where the retrofitting is needed if the building is not designed as per codes subsequent updating of code and design practice actually if you take uh, i told already about this earthquake even if you take wind loads also the previously previous code says that uh, for particularly for kakinada uh, old buildings were designed for 150 kmph speed whereas as per revision of uh, is 875 it it is about 200 kg per cm square 200 kmph uh, now after hudod another factor of uh, uh, actually previously for wind load designs k1 k2 k3 are the three factors and now the new factor k4 is introduced after hudod and k4 is based on the distance from sea coast and uh, that is uh, k4 is a uh, to a maximum of 1.3 k4 is equal to 1.3 for structures close to sea coast and it is 1.15 uh, i think it is about 30 kilometers away from sea coast and uh, one for structures after uh, 60 kilometers something like that so that uh, that uh, based on those uh, uh, factors the based on those new ports the structures are bound to be redesigned uh, where the, the structures are to be designed for uh, those new wind loads, the, the necessity of retrofitting will be very much there. And uh, surprisingly, in India, majority of the buildings, about 85 to 90 percent of the buildings, are not are non-engineered buildings and uh, not designed by engineers. Also, uh, those non-engineered buildings or load-bearing structures. Load bearing structures are called as a non engineering structure, non engineering uh, structures, non engineered structures. Those structures are always vulnerable to these natural disasters and they need the retrofitting. The different uh, typical issues uh, of uh, structural members. Uh, which are to be addressed are cracks in structures, design of construction flaws, seismic count. Methods of retrofitting. Adding a new shear wall, thickening technique using steel bracing, technique for isolating the base, technique for mass reduction, jacketing techniques, fiber reinforced polymer, method of epoxy injection, bonding of external plates. Uh, in this, uh, the technique of isolating uh, isolating the base is uh, not a common practice. It is uh, done for very few buildings in earthquake zones of zone 5. Uh, in uh, Gujarat, particularly in Buj, after Buj earthquake, uh, this isolation technique is uh, adopted in some of these structures uh, in Gujarat. And it is not a very common technique. Uh, the technique of mass reduction. What this means is that suppose uh, if the if you want to make the structure fit without dismantling it, so you have to reduce the dead load. You cannot reduce the live load because the functionality is fixed. So what you can do, you can make the mass reduction. How you can make this? By making external walls with uh, lightweight bricks like AAC blocks and internal walls with by removing them uh, the existing walls and by replacing them with drywall concept drywalls drywall means it is of about uh, 50 mm or 60 mm thickness with uh, 12 mm thick uh, jib board or uh, uh, this uh, cement uh, cement uh, cement uh, uh, base plates on both sides with the aluminum section in between and this is most effective and this reduces a lot of dead load on the structure and it gives very efficient 
retrofitting method. Jacketing techniques, as already explained, by making new reinforcement all around. And uh, this fiber reinforced polymer lapping uh, gives thin sections with very high strength. And the epoxy injection also improves the strength. Actually, I am doing my PhD on uh, retrofitting of uh, rehabilitation of structures using the SIFCA. For that, I have used uh, five alternate materials and based on that, I, I came to a conclusion that my SIFCON is efficient when compared with other materials. And one of the methods I tried, other methods I tried is epoxy injection and this fiber reinforced polymer and this jacketing technique. Recron also I tried. Recron is also efficient and is almost comparable with the SIFCON. What are the stages of retrofitting? The selection of object of retrofitting, that is the prime stage, and reviewing the initial considerations, obtaining information of the building, seismic evaluation, decision to retrofit or demolish, selection and design of retrofit strategies, verification of retrofit scheme, construction and maintenance and monitoring. Here, the maintenance and monitoring is very important. Doing the thing is a is one job, but uh, maintenance and monitoring is a very important job, which will either enhance the life of the structure or decrease the life of structure. But uh, major in majority of the buildings, we forget about this uh, last and the most important parameter that is maintenance and monitoring. The retrofitting techniques. Uh, can be categorized into global and local. Global retrofit is required when the entire load resisting system is deficient. So global means total. Total retrofit is required when the entire load resisting system is deficient, either by design fault or because of poor quality of construction. Whatever the reason may be, if the total structure is to be retrofitted, then that that method to be uh, termed as a global retrofit. And whereas local retrofit means where the limited members are deficient. Suppose one beam has sag or deflection due to either faulty design or faulty execution or more loading than expected. Uh, subsequent to casting of the structure. In such cases, if very few members are to be strengthened, then that uh, technique is to be termed as a local retrofit. The, what are the materials to be used for retrofitting? Epoxy resins, epoxy mortar, quick setting cement mortar, micro concrete, fiber reinforcement concrete, fiber reinforcement polymer, and ferro cement. Just a moment. The advantages of uh, retrofitting are this approach is used to keep the structure's concrete base from shifting. There will not be any shifting of the structure. It, the structure will be intact and it is to be strengthened. It increases the structure's stability and security. Buildings that have been retrofitted are more adaptable and ideal for existing or future activities, as well as making a structure more comfortable to resist loading. Aids in the prevention of structural damage and injury to the inhabitants. Buildings that have been retrofitted are more energy efficient and produce fewer carbon emissions from their operations. So now the carbon emissions are uh, and this uh, green building concepts are becoming very popular. So in such cases, to reduce the carbon footprint, if the building is retrofitted 
instead of uh, replacing or demolishing the existing building and constructing a new building that will uh, save our environment thank you and any questions we will we'll go in detail about each and every method with uh, suitable videos in the next sessions hello sir hello hello yeah good afternoon sir good afternoon sir sir what is the difference between fiber reinforced polymer and fiber reinforced concrete fiber reinforced polymer is used in fiber reinforced polymer concrete it is a it is a base material it can be used directly either for uh, like wrapping or it can be used with concrete if the volume is more then you have to mix it with uh, concrete or aggregates uh, so fiber reinforced polymer is a separate material which has to be added yes sir yes sir and what is the micro concrete micro concrete uh, it you it uses uh, this polymer sir it is a okay. uh, oh. where where uh, uh, repair 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 is there there we generally go for uh, this uh, micro concreting in this uh, the polymers are used for uh, as a cementitious material okay okay thank you sir and secondly Sir, how the jacketing of the footing is done, sir? Jacketing of footing can be done by increasing the size. By you have to excavate. I have shown it in one photograph. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. In that, uh, you can clearly see uh, the size of the footing is increased. Yeah, you you can see this photograph. In this, uh, the footing size is increased. Okay. Good afternoon, sir. So the uh, steel rod jacket of the column, we are, which are used being used for jacketing, are to be inserted in the footings. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely. Uh, by using a chemical grouting, we can introduce them in, into the footing. But sir, sir, how the bottom rods are being introduced in the footing, sir, in the in the jacketing process? In the jacketing process, by by making grouting, uh, chemical grouting or mechanical grouting, we can introduce those bars into the existing concrete. Okay. Oh, oh. okay. But but in that case, the uh, there will be a joint. It won't be left uh, like no. No, no, no lapping is required, sir. The, the method of uh, this uh, uh, chemical grouting is uh, the load uh, will be transferred to the concrete through the chemical bond. Okay. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Sir, your your voice is not clear, sir. Sir, I have some questions regarding uh, seepage for walls, sir. Seepage for walls, yeah. Yes, sir. Currently, sir, we are under a seismic activity palace in our state, sir. Sir? Sir, currently, we are undergoing seismic activity of a palace, sir. 
sir your your voice is not clear sir okay sir i will uh, type the question sir yeah please uh, sir sir this is dr prasad yeah sir i have a question sir yeah to retrofit uh, shala foundation we can execute the works uh, by simple excavation mm -hmm. what are the technical things to be considered for uh, deep foundation retrofitting deep foundation retrofitting uh, you have to make the uh, additional piles the function yes kuna sir additional piles adhe paint le colors paatai em em undo Sir, uh, Durga Prasad, sir, clear, sir? Yes, sir, sir. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Sir, this is Sudhana. One question, sir. Sir. Sir, uh, what are the commercial brands locally available for uh, these uh, grouting, retrofitting uh, chemicals, epoxies? What are the locally available materials, companies? Fasrak, Seca. Berger, Asian. Now so many coming companies are coming, sir. Previously there are only one or two brands, but nowadays uh, almost all paint companies uh, they have shifted. Even Ultratech Cement, they also came into this uh, uh, materials, uh, retrofitting or uh, repair uh, materials. So uh, lot of brands are available, sir. Okay, sir. Sir, uh, good afternoon, sir. I am Murli Krishna. Yes, sir. Uh, I need some information on uh, the retrofitting of the, the future uh, uh, seismic uh, prone buildings. For example, yeah. uh, we may use some dampers probably. Yeah. So, yeah. is there any is there any uh, challenges uh, when we introduce dampers for the future buildings? That means future required buildings. It's not that the buildings are constructed right now. But yeah. maybe it may require retrofitting in in future. So what yeah. type of challenges we may uh, encounter when we introduce some dampers for them? Particularly in coastal areas, uh, maybe some uh, underpinning works is also uh, uh, giving rise for the retrofitting works. So uh, is there any recommendation for uh, usage of dampers for uh, such buildings? Sir, uh, dampers, uh, to my knowledge, actually I am not very much well versed with it, but to my knowledge, dampers are generally preferred where the earthquake zones are 4 and 5. But for zone 3, dampers are not that much needed. Anyhow, uh, I'll go through the literature and I'll revert back to you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir, in, in, uh, in chart box, Mr. Ranjit. Yeah. Rajat posted a question. Sir, sir, currently we are undergoing seismic retrofitting of palace where we observed severe seepage through mud walls. Okay. How to minimize such seepage? Yeah, by, by making a grouting of cement slurry, grouting of cement slurry into the walls. And this can be controlled. The ship because uh, the old palace means uh, that may be about uh, 70 to 80 years old or even more than that also. Actually, the theoretical life of lime mortar is 75 years. So, uh, uh, what you are saying is that that building is with the mud mortar. So, its theoretical life is totally exhausted. So, what you have to do is uh, you have to make uh, uh, grouting of uh, cement slurry into the walls at suitable places and thereby the seepage can be controlled uh, and over that the, uh, the what do you call it as a silicon coating over the walls after completing your plastering or putty work painting everything above that if you go for this uh, uh, coating like laminate it will protect the walls from seepage okay sir one more question uh, shubhas uh, posted in uh, chart box sir how to fill expansion joints 
please suggest the method and materials yeah. for filling the uh, expansion joints what you have to do is uh, you have to put the raster bar first suppose if the crack width is uh, uh, sorry if the expansion joint is 25 mm you have to introduce raster bar first raster bar means uh, it is a like a high density thermocol material in a simple language i am saying that raster bar is a high density thermocol material which will be in a circular shape like a roller that is to be fitted into that uh, expansion joint and above that that material is uh, the above that is to be filled with uh, some elastic compound thereby the expansion and contraction will have its free way and the seepage will not be there how much uh, uh, sorry any problem sir expand yet sir how much hello hello generally the expand giant ah uh, sir sir generally expand giant uh, size how much will preferable sir uh, that uh, that uh, that depends on uh, uh, building uh, size sir and uh, uh, generally minimum will be 25 mm and uh, even in uh, some buildings uh, when we designed for one medical college that expansion joint came to about 100 mm oh. in some cases uh, that expansion joint where uh, nowadays nobody is preferring expansion joints because of this leakage and maintenance problems in such cases if you design the structure for temperature stresses these expansion joints can be eliminated to some extent. We uh, suppose as per, IS, as per IS code, uh, generally the expansion joint is to be provided for every 45 meters. Suppose if your building is about 60 meters, then uh, you can avoid expansion joint by making your design with uh, for structure, temperature stresses along with other loads. Thereby, you can avoid this uh, expansion joint. Okay, sir. It's it is question for uh, about uh, retrofitting, sir. Yeah. Uh, generally, um, we are using for retrofitting techniques uh, by jocketing method and carbon wrapping. And the FRP method. Yeah. And uh, uh, yeah. uh, suppose when it comes to the when it comes to the carbon wrapping and FRP wrapping, what is the difference between FRP and carbon wrapping? Sir? And one more thing, which is the um, best way to adopt the, in both of them? FRP. Uh, FRP. Cost, uh, cost, uh, suppose suppose strengthing wise, which is the higher strength will will gain in carbon to the car. Carbon wrapping will have high strength. Okay. Carbon wrapping will have higher strength. Yes, sir, this carbon wrapping is uh, to be used for the uh, beams and slabs. Beams, beams and slabs most commonly, and for columns also it can be used. But uh, uh, if you uh, if you are uh, uh, going from Rajmandri to airport, one bridge is there, a fourth, uh, fourth road bridge. There, uh, under, the, under the bridge, you can see the carbon wrapping. Actually, we have adopted this uh, carbon wrapping in one of the buildings in Kakinada, that is Hope Hospital. Now it is a Medicover Hospital, where the building is originally designed for uh, this uh, one uh, hotel, Green Park Hotel. Subsequently, that, that was sold to Hope Hospital. After uh, purchase by Hope Hospital Management, they wanted to have one canteen building for that. So actually, uh, the, the a particular part is not designed for that loads. So, but afterwards, they wanted to have canteen building there. To accommodate that, we made carbon wrapping for the post-tensioned beams of that part 
and uh, columns were introduced over that and uh, this uh, gal volume sheet roof is provided for canteen so this uh, uh, carbon wrapping it's uh, almost uh, about 8 mm thickness and it is directly wrapped to the beam and uh, thereby there is uh, no height increase of the beams or anything and the functional utility was totally changed such advantage will be there with this carbon wrapping of course it is a costly material and uh, very few vendors are there for adopting this technique uh, wrapping is done after removing of plaster yes sir yes sir sir can you share your contact details please your contact details please yeah, sure sir sure sir sure sir, sure, sir. Uh, sir, sir, uh, hello. Sir, hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Sir, when it comes to the carbon wrapping, only one wrapping is required, or any two, three layers are required. Sir? That that uh, that depends on the additional strength required, sir. Thickness can be changed, and if needed, two, three wraps also may be uh, provided. Here, for this building, we have adopted only single layers. Uh -huh. So generally, maximum strength how much will gain, sir, uh, by using of carbon wrapping? Al almost to 500 to 600 percent of RCC, sir. So when when we say the, I mean, uh, in yes, MPA, sir. Uh, yeah. sir, can you so how much you think of that? Contact number, sir. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll share my number. So because of we we are more interested in our lectures, sir. We need further ones also. I will contact you. So sure, sir. Sure, contact, sir. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Are there any more questions? All right. So please, sir. sir what about the FRP? FRP, sir. What? FRP. FRP also same like a carbon wrapping. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, it's same like that, sir. But what is, is the a... difference? Uh, the strength, how much will differ vary, sir, in both of them? Strength-wise. Uh, Strength-wise, uh, FRP will give you three to four times of RCC, sir. Three to four. Three to four. Three hundred to four hundred percent. Okay, uh, this is a carbon wrapping is a 500. 500 to 600. Sir, uh, one question from Rajamani. Uh, uh, he is asking about the latest technology for monument buildings. Uh, monument buildings, uh, retrofitting means uh, with the uh, the FRP or the carbon wrapping or the jacketing that depends on the condition of the building. These are uh, epoxy based and polymer based materials. They, they will have very slim sections. Actually, in Kakinada, for State Bank of India, one uh, building is there. That is about 100 years old. That building, they want to make it as a heritage building. So for that, we made our consultancy service. So what happened is, uh, the building is about 110 years old. With Madras Terrace as well. The, uh, they, they doesn't want to change anything. So what we made is for the existing walls where dampness is there, we made a cement grouting and above that we have given the wall care, wall putty and painting is done. And One moment, sir. Resound is coming. One, one moment. Yeah. There, a roofing, 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 roofing needs to be uh, changed because a lot of leakage is there. 
but uh, the client doesn't want to make the change so what we did is we have we have raised the walls raised some simple structure we have taken and above that we made the gal volume sheet roofing and thereby the total roof is protected and the originality of the building is not changed Any more questions, sir? Hello. Hello. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sir, sir, uh, okay. Can you um, um, forward this PPT, sir? We need your this paper Yeah, yeah. You, you type your mail ID, sir. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Already personally given. I was forward you, sir. You need a phone number. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Our mail ID is given in the uh, chat box, sir. But sir, we need your phone number also, sir. Yeah, my phone number is nine eight four eight one. One second, I will. I will see. Yeah. Now we think card be tested. Nine eight four eight one. Six zero three five seven. Three five seven. Further, me who join our team. Oh, sure, sir. Sure, sir. Further, sir, the team is important. Our team. Repeat one second, sir. Your number. Nine eight four eight one six zero three five seven three five seven. Every month we are conducting a webinar, sir. Mostly in on third Sunday between eleven to one. Ah, sir, sir. I just want to give information, sir. Like we said, sir, can you add to our WhatsApp group? Sure. Yes, sir. My number is better, sir. My number is better. Number is better. Sir, my 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 number is better. जल ग्रोविंग प्लास्टिंग ग्रिपिंग बॉंडिंग मन की but uh, but my uh, lab ki testing was not true what we are getting is uh, majority of the aac blocks are having strength lower than 2 newtons per mm square per mm square ah entha ostundi sir average ga entha ostundi manaki 4 4 4 plus osthe manchi sir okay ah but meek maamulu conventional brick kuda minimum 4 osthe gaani vaadam kani 1.5 ostund majority of the aac blocks 1.5 and 1.5 and 1.5 to 2 5 to 2 my god ah okay okay ante ippudu mana local me gani available for ncl aac blocks gani use cheyachundra cheyakudandi cheyachandi anni manaki manaki ee madhyana vachina vaatlo fusion fusion ఒకటి స్ట్రెంగ్త్ బానే వస్తుంది 
తర్వాత మన బ్యూకాన్ బ్యూకాన్ బానే బ్యూకాన్ బానే వస్తున్నది తర్వాత ఎన్సీ ఎన్సీసీ వాళ్ళది బానే వస్తున్నది ఫ్యూజన్ అంటే అక్కడ అండి కాకినాడ లోకల్ ఫ్యూజన్ విజయవాడ అండి విజయవాడ విజయవాడ ఫ్యూజన్ న్యూకాన్ అక్కడ అండి న్యూకాన్ ఎన్ యు సి ఓ ఎన్ అదే న్యూకాన్ ఎక్కడ అండి అది న్యూకాన్ ఆల్మోస్ట్ విజయవాడ అండి విజయవాడ అవి నియర్లీ 4 వస్తాయి అండి ఆ 4 వస్తాయి అండి 4 4.5 అలా వస్తాయి అండి ఓకే ఓకే ఇప్పుడు మనం బ్రిక్ ఒక క్వాలిటీ బెస్ట్ క్వాలిటీ బ్రిక్ అనుకున్నది ఎంత వస్తుంది సార్ కాకినాడలో దీని మాచవరం మాచవరం మంచి బ్రిక్ అయితే 4.5 టు 5 వస్తుంది అండి వస్తుంది అండి అది ఆ వస్తుంది కొన్ని 6 కూడా వస్తాయి అండి అది ఇప్పుడు కొంగోడు ఇవన్నీ వస్తాయి కదా కొంచెం క్వాలిటీ కదా కొంగోడు కొంగు కొంగోడు ఐ డోంట్ నో కొంగోడు అండి మన ఇటన్ని బాగానే వస్తాయి ఇందులో ఇంపార్టెంట్ ఆస్పెక్ట్ ఇంకోటి ఏంటంటే సార్ ఈ ఏఏసి బ్లాక్స్ కానీ బ్రిక్ కానీ సెలక్షన్ లో వాటర్ అబ్జార్బ్షన్ ఈజ్ మోస్ట్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ పారామీటర్ అండి వాటర్ అబ్జార్బ్షన్ షుడ్ బి లెస్ దాన్ ట్వంటీ పర్సెంట్ వెరేజ్ మెజారిటీ ఆఫ్ ది బ్రిక్స్ ఆర్ కమింగ్ అబౌట్ ట్వంటీ ఫైవ్ టు ట్వంటీ సిక్స్ పర్సెంట్ ఈ ఏఏసి బ్లాక్స్ లో ఇంకొక మేజర్ ప్రాబ్లం ఏంటంటే వాటర్ అబ్జార్బ్షన్ వాటర్ అబ్జార్బ్షన్ మెజారిటీ ఆఫ్ ది ఈ బ్లాక్స్ లో వీ ఆర్ అబ్జర్వింగ్ అబౌట్ ట్వంటీ సిక్స్ టు ట్వంటీ సెవెన్ పర్సెంట్ వాటర్ అబ్జార్బ్షన్ ఇప్పుడు దాని వల్ల క్రాక్స్ ఒకటి సైజ్ ఆఫ్ బ్లాక్ పెద్దది అవడం వల్ల ఒకటి అండి రెండు ఎప్పుడైతే సైజ్ ఆఫ్ బ్లాక్ పెద్దదైందో మనం ఈ కన్సీల్డ్ వైరింగ్ కోసం వీ ఆర్ మేకింగ్ గ్రూవ్స్ బికాస్ ఆఫ్ మేకింగ్ గ్రూవ్స్ విత్ లాట్ ఆఫ్ వైబ్రేషన్ బీయింగ్ ద సైజ్ బిగ్గర్ అన్ఎక్స్పెక్టెడ్ హార్జెంటల్ క్రాక్స్ అండ్ వర్టికల్ క్రాక్స్ ఆర్ డెవలపింగ్ ఇన్ ద జాయింట్స్ సో టు మై ఒపీనియన్ ఇఫ్ ద సైజ్ ఆఫ్ ద బ్లాక్ ఏసి బ్లాక్ ఈస్ రెడ్యూస్డ్ టు స్మాలర్ సైజ్ దీస్ క్రాక్స్ కెన్ గెట్ రెడ్యూస్డ్ మెయిన్ నేను అనుకున్నది ఏంటంటే ఈ ప్లాస్టరింగ్ థిక్నెస్ ఎక్కువ అయినప్పుడు ఒకటి ప్లాస్టరింగ్ క్రాక్స్ వస్తున్నాయండి ప్లాస్టరింగ్ థిక్నెస్ మోర్ దెన్ ట్వెల్వ్ ఎంఎం ట్వంటీ ఎంఎం దాటి వచ్చినప్పుడు అది చాలా ఫైనర్ ఫిషర్స్ కింద వస్తున్నాయి కదండి ఈవెన్ వాల్ కేర్ పెట్టినా కూడా ఒక టూ త్రీ ఇయర్స్ తర్వాత ఫైనర్ క్రాక్స్ విజిబిలిటీ వస్తుంది ఫిల్లర్ పెట్టి ఇంకా క్రాక్ ఫిల్ పెట్టి చేసే అంత పెద్ద అంత పెద్ద క్రాక్స్ కాదు అలానే అంత తక్కువ కూడా కాదు ఫైనర్ గా ఉండి ఎక్కువ వస్తున్నాయి నెంబర్ ఆఫ్ క్రాక్స్ ఇప్పుడు థిక్నెస్ ఆఫ్ ది ప్లాస్టింగ్ ఈస్ మోర్ తగ్గుతాయండి అది ఒకటి రెండు ఈ జాయింట్స్ ఫిల్ చేయడానికి వాళ్ళు ఒక మెటీరియల్ ఇస్తున్నారు సిలికాన్ మెటీరియల్ అది యూజ్ చేస్తే క్రాక్స్ కొంచెం తగ్గుతాయండి రెండు అదే వాడుతున్నాం తర్వాత ఇంకొకటి ఏంటంటే సపోజ్ ఇఫ్ ద లెంగ్త్ ఆఫ్ వాల్ ఈస్ మోర్ దాన్ లెవెన్ ట్వెల్వ్ ఫీట్ దెన్ యు గో ఫర్ ఎ స్మాల్ వర్టికల్ కాంక్రీట్ బీమ్ అంటే ఒక నాలుగు టెన్ కాలం లాగా నాలుగు టెన్ ఎంఎం మోసలు ఏవో కట్టి ఒక చిన్న బీమ్ లాగా తీసుకెళ్తే కాలం లాగా కాలం లాగా ఆర్ ఆర్ హ్యావింగ్ గుడ్ రిజల్ట్ ఆఫ్ ఇట్ అలాగే అవునండి అలాగే అలాగే విండో విండో సిల్ లెవెల్ లో అక్కడ ఒక కాంక్రీట్ స్ట్రిప్ వేస్తే దేర్ ఆల్సో by by uh-huh. using that uh, we we are uh, we got reduced this cracks avunu uh-huh. window sill estunnam andi window lintel level lo kuda estunnam estunnam 
హారియంటల్ లెంగ్త్ ట్వంటీ ఫీట్ ఉంది అనుకోండి మధ్యలో యూ మేక్ ఏ స్మాల్ కాలం అంటే ఇవన్నీ చేయడం వల్ల పెట్టుకోవాలి ఇవన్నీ చేయడం అవును కాస్ట్ ఎఫెక్ట్ నెస్ పోతుంది అండి దాని యూసేజ్ పోతుంది అది కాస్ట్ ఎఫెక్ట్ నెస్ పోతుంది చెప్పండి కార్బన్ బ్రాపింగ్ అన్నారు కదా సార్ అది ఓన్లీ కార్బన్ మెటీరియల్ అయినా ఇంకా ఏమన్నా సమ్ అదర్ మెటీరియల్ దాంట్లో మిక్స్ చేసి ఏముండదండి మీరు ఇట్స్ లైక్ ఇట్ ఇట్ కమ్స్ ఇన్ రోల్స్ అండి దానికి గ్లూ గ్లూ అప్లై చేస్తారు డైరెక్ట్ గా కాంక్రీట్ సర్ఫేస్ కి అటాచ్ చేస్తారు మీరు ఈసారి కూడా మీరు ఫైవ్ టు సిక్స్ టైమ్స్ దాని స్ట్రెంగ్ ఎక్కువ అన్నారు కదా సార్ దాంట్లో ఇంకా కార్బన్ కంటే కూడా ఏమైనా వేరే మెటీరియల్ ఉంటుందేమో అని అంటే స్ట్రెంగ్ ఎక్కువ రావాలి కదా సార్ అవును అవునండి ఎం ట్వంటీ ఫైవ్ అంటే ఇది ఎం వన్ ఫిఫ్టీ వస్తుందని అలాగండి అంతేగాని ఫైవ్ హండ్రెడ్ పర్సెంట్ ఫైవ్ టు సిక్స్ టైమ్స్ thank you all for making it uh, more successful and uh, we we invite you for the coming sessions also thank you very much sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you so much thank you sir thank you